Hello everyone and welcome back to more of the Labyrinth of Versailles. In the last episode, uh, Yuji was doing some Asako's work because Asako just was kind of out of it. She's been a lot of drinking and she's just kind of weird and decided to take it upon herself to do some of her work. Well, JB found out she was not happy, understandably. And now, JB has taken us in private to kind of discuss some things with us because Yuji was showing interest that he actually kind of wants to do the work, but, you know, in a legit manner. As the sun's shadow sunk behind the mountains in the west, JB stalked down the path in such an obvious rage that I half expected to see steam rising from her head. Her heels weren't exactly suited to the terrain, but she managed somehow, thrusting her shoulders forward with every emphatic step I followed in silence. At first, I thought about trying to lighten the mood with a joke or two. Ha <laughs> ha, hey. But there might as well have been a sign on JB's back reading, Don't talk to me, an oversized type, so I ultimately decided it would be wisest to keep my trap shut. After about ten minutes of this, we reached the paved road at the bottom of the trail. JB's pride and joy, a new yellow car that had supposedly cost her most of the money in her bank account, was waiting for us there. Heck, I'd love to be able to buy a vehicle with most of the money in my bank account. As we neared, the keyless entry system detected the approach of its owner. Very fancy. And with a cute little chime and a flash of the hazard lights, the doors automatically unlocked. <laughs> Alright. In the face of such a curt order, I found myself unable to even to ask where we'd be going. Without a word, I got into the vehicle. The cabin still had a hint of that new car smell that smells so divine. The passenger seat was snug and comfortable. To be honest, our destination wasn't really the first thing on my mind. I was too busy trying to figure out what Asako and JB had gotten so worked up about in the first place. And it wasn't as if they owed me anything. I, I was just some random kid they happened to take in, right? I couldn't understand why they'd get into such a furious fight about my future, of all things. Well, to borrow Asuka's words, maybe I hadn't been that interested in understanding. Still, I was beginning to think it might not hurt to try. But before I could put those thoughts into action, JB abruptly tore her glare off the road and broke her silence. It's alright. You know, sometimes it's had... It's hard to have a coherent conversation with three people in the room. Heck, I can't have a coherent conversation with just myself in the room. At times like those, splitting up to talk things over can be an effective approach. You may notice that the background audio is a little bit quieter than it usually is because I lowered it because it was really loud.何かこう、でも あなたは他の道を見つけていないだけなのよ。普通の会社員でもいいし、飲食店の店員でも何でもいい。もっと普通の生き方だってあなたならできるはず。Why well, there is something to be said for teaching what you know, right? I mean, I can see where JB got upset, though. I understand what you mean, JB. And I think Asuka probably does, too. Well, she did raise me. She told me something a while ago. You don't need two brilliant officers in one company. Ever heard that one? Well, basically, she said that when a commander and his XO are both really skilled, their troops tend to get wiped out sooner or later. Ah, 
作戦が失敗した時は一気に全滅するって話ね Yeah, and there's something else Asuka is always telling me. My opinions aren't always going to be correct, neither are JB's. The final decision is always going to be yours. That's what she told me. <laughs> she also says, My job is to smack the enemies right in front of us, and JB's job is to fight with an eye on the enemies we'll be facing 10 years from now. To be honest, I can't even imagine myself 10 years down the line. I'm a dumb kid, and I've got my hands full with the present. So it seems that to me that I might as well just focus on what I can do right now. That's simple enough, right? I don't disagree with you, but it's easy to understand, and I feel like it fits my personality, you know? What do you mean? 自分の分身を作ったのよ。自分と似たような境遇を持った、自分が教えることができる相手。それは最初はほんの気まぐれだったかもしれない。それでも、短期間でぐんぐん成長するあなたに、朝子は言葉にならない感動のようなものを感じていたってわけ。自分にはできなかった生き方をさせたいとか言っておいて、結局は、自分と同じ道を力強く歩き始めたあなたが嬉しくて仕方がないのよ。I don't know about that. I told Asuka I want to be like her once. Do you know how she responded to that? 草壁アサコは二人もいらない。でしょ ?What you knew? 前にアサコ本人から聞いたわ。あのバカ、私みてえになりたいとか言い出しやがった。ほんとバカ、マジでバカ。焼き鳥かじりながら嬉しそうに話してたわよ。Well, doesn't need to kusakabe a s u k a s and even if I follow the same road, I mean, that doesn't mean things will turn out exactly the same. In that case, I'll take the same path she did, and I'll make it my own. 同じく風雨にさらされども、何時は赤く、我はきなり。Okay, no need to get all philosophical on me. 同じ環境に育った果実でも、木が違えば赤くもなるし黄色くもなる。赤い実は甘くて人に愛されるけれど、黄色く酸っぱい実もまた人は捨てないって話よ。うん。うん、ねえ、ユージ。Yes. 真面目な話をするつもりなんだけど、真面目に聞く気はある ?I'm always serious. ごめん。ちょっと後ろからアルミジャッキ取ってもらえる That's not. I'm pretty sure you'd actually kill me. 真面目に聞く気は Okay, okay.、うん、最後にもう一度確認するわよ。あなたは本当にそれでいいの Yeah, I, I made up my mind. I want to repay both of you for everything you've done for me. 恩返しが理由ならやめてもらえる Don't worry about it. This is a debt I'll probably never repay anyway. All you need to do is keep an eye on the way I live my life. That's a big help. I I'm sorry, JB. It feels like I'm giving you headaches, you know? I'm sorry, JB. It feels like I'm giving you headaches. それよりもこれからのあなたの人生かなり面倒なものになるわよ覚悟はできてるの What's life without all the trouble? Helps keep things from getting too boring 生意気言ってんじゃないわよまったく I know I know And so I finally set foot onto the road Asuka had followed The road towards being a CIRS agent Sir's agent. Better than the ma'am agent division. Even now, I remember vividly just how enormous that first step felt. Don't even know what year it is. Alright. When you're looking for a job, qualifications are usually necessary. And when your chosen line of work involves protecting the interests of a nation from the shadows, the standards are understandably strict. 
You need results and achievements that demonstrate genuine skill. In other words, it's pretty easy to talk about getting a license, but the actual process isn't quite so simple. It didn't help that I'd lived a somewhat complicated life up to this point. In order to obtain the necessary qualifications, I needed to have at least some educational track record. Isn't that a little late for that at my age? なあ、学校って言ったって、要は卒業資格がもらえる海軍連校だし、合衆国中のバカとアホと悪を集めた。クソだめみてえな学校だ。お前なんか全然ガキで、周りは年上ばっかだ。気にすんな。なんかペイン
He was wearing a blue outfit that resembled a prison guard's uniform. After a brief glance around the area, he proceeded to bellow at us at the top of his lungs. Oh nice, he speaks Japanese. Oh, that'll be really nice for the language barrier. Some people flinched and lined up immediately. Those were the more innocent ones. The majority hadn't quite come to terms with their new position in the world and walked over to the bus with a deliberate, resentful sluggishness. Did they actually think expressing their displeasure through a lousy attitude was going to make things any better for them? They're idiots. They weren't much different from the kids in also school in that respect. The familiarity of it all was actually a little reassuring. When I presented my orders to the man in front of the entrance to the bus, he flipped through the contents of the envelope briefly, then glared down at me. Do I need something other than the envelope? Stop honking, I'm on going. After everyone boarded, we drove around picking up groups, waiting at various other locations, but none of them were any better than the guys I was with. Inside that bus, there were two main topics of conversations. Where are you from? What did you pull to end up here? The hierarchy was mainly determined by your hometown and the number of illegal things you'd done there. I don't like Oslo school in that respect also. From what I overheard, the bus was full of former criminals. Car thieves, convenience store robbers, drug dealers, even a few sex offenders. Not cool. I really didn't want to have anyone strike up a conversation with me, so I decided to pretend I was asleep, but... That didn't stop a certain black man from reaching over and forcefully grabbing hold of my shoulder. Oi, Chinese. Omae wa donna koto shite kita da? Huh? It honestly hurt. Maybe he wanted to show off the power of his grip. Maybe he just didn't know how to control his own strength. Either way, it was a serious nuisance. That said, I couldn't ignore him or answer with some half-assed lie. It would just make things even more difficult down the road. Learn that much in Oslo's school. A simple and honest answer was usually best. I told both my parents. Yeah, you want to fuck with me now? That said, you have to know when to take a hint. Ha <laughs> ha! Of course not, it's just a joke. I'm not Chinese, you idiot. As a general rule, thugs only attack those weaker than themselves. You only get one life and it's over if you lose the wrong fight. <laughs> There aren't many bullies stupid enough to go picking fights with people stronger than they are. Naturally, that means there's nothing people like that hate people like that hate more than someone they can't size up properly. I guess I fell into that category. After that brief conversation, nobody else spoke to me for the rest of the ride. Finally, get some damn sleep. All in all, I think we spent a good two hours bumping around in that bus as it circled around picking up students. When I finally arrived at our destination, we were greeted by a surprisingly impressive gate. Looked like something you might see in front of a more normal school. The grounds inside were lush with green. A blatantly military building, best described as a plain white lump of concrete, was visible from the entrance. Still, it wasn't nicer looking than they expected. Seems like they probably covered up the grime with a fresh coat of paint every few years. Would have helped if we knew where the gym even was. For the time being, since I didn't have any luggage to worry about, I jumped down from the bus and took off running in the direction the man had pointed. This was true in Oslo school as well, but in the military, the fundamental rules run wherever you're taking more than three steps. After running about 200 meters in the direction of the white building, a semi-cylindrical structure came into view at the other end of a massive athletic field. Predictably, it was also painted white, like everything else here. Normally, they might have held an impressive enlistment ceremony in there, but low-quality recruits like us apparently didn't warrant anything so fancy. Once we got to the gym, they immediately split us up by gender, then confiscated every last one of our personal belongings. That included our wallets, our cell phones, and the clothes on our backs. In other words, they had us standing there completely naked. Something of a rude welcome, but it was too late for regrets now. After lining us up in rows, the instructor handed out a medical examination form and had us write our names on the top. Of course, our names were already printed on the top of the form, so I suppose they were trying to identify anyone who was completely illiterate. Carrying only that one flimsy piece of paper, we filed into stations where nurses in white clothing were waiting. Answered a few questions about our medical history, and then shuffled over to whatever line they told us to wait in next. They tested our eyesight, gave us all sorts of vaccinations, Pushed their stamps down on our forms over and over again. 
At the end, they even chucked us for venereal disease. By the conclusion of that particular experience, I had to call Asako and tell her she might have something. It was starting to feel like they'd taken my last scrap of human dignity. But then they abruptly announced I was done and pointed me to a machine nearby. I lined up the arrows and slipped my form into the slot. A moment later, I popped back out with a barcode printed on top. After following a series of duct tape arrows across the floor, I finally exchanged my form with a single pair of underwear. Of course, even that was a significant improvement over being naked, so I found myself breathing a sigh of relief. But before long, they sat me down, threw a white sheet around my neck, and shaved off my hair with all the gentleness of a farmer shearing sheep. As angry complaints echo throughout the gym, I walked across the floor rubbing my newly cropped head. Accepted my next present, a top-loading duffel bag made from white canvas. The square board at the bottom was about 40 centimeters per side. The total length of the bag was maybe 140. In other words, it looked like a bit like something like Santa Claus might carry, but rather than toys, it probably would gradually be filled up with government-issued goods. We all lined up with our bags, waiting our turn to receive our clothing. Apart from the fact that we were all half-naked, it kind of resembled lunchtime at a busy cafeteria. As it happened, the black man who'd spoken to me on the bus was right in front of me. I wasn't sure the people behind the long desk at, at the head of the line were maybe older students or recent graduates. Whatever the case, they treated the rookies in the front of them with fairly obvious contempt. <laughs> 15. 2 feet, sir. 10 inches. You're going to give me a shorter size anyway. Counting my socks and line, you just hand them over, will you? I don't, I don't think that's how clothes work, but all right. That's the military for you, right? Just buy new ones if those really don't fit. I glanced down at the goods I'd just been handed. Most of them were clearly used rather than new. Just like in Oslo school, they were probably reissuing us clothing and shoes returned by recent graduates. In that case, they'd presumably allow us to buy our own gear as well. If you don't want to get athlete's foot or jacket, I'd recommend picking up some new shoes and underwear. That's a good question. As far as I know, they usually pay trainees with tickets instead of a salary, and we'll probably be able to exchange those for clothes or snacks or whatever. No, I was taken in by a soldier as a kid, that's all. My jokes are funny. That wasn't funny, so no, that was not a joke. You catch on quick. The first thing they issued us were boots and a pair of indoor leather shoes. After that came two sets of each Type 1 and Type 2 work uniforms. Two sets of work clothes, one workwear jumpsuit, three long sleeve shirts, three short sleeve shirts, eight pairs of socks, two BDU battle dress uniforms, not the maid kind, two caps and round cans, one running suit, two pairs of sweatshirts and sweatpants for use as sleepwear. By the time we finished cramming all that in, there wasn't room for anything else. They had to smack the bottom of our bags against the floor to forcibly compress it all. They packed a few bathroom goods like towels and toothbrushes into the space I created, capped everything off with a helmet, and then finally tied the bag's drawstrings tight. By this point, the thing must have weighed a good 20-30 kilos. Almost felt like we were carrying a body bag. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Okay.そしてもう一つはこのゴム印だ。こいつには、お前らの打裁名前と流行る海兵隊の兵績番号が記されている。ここでは飯を食うにも犯行がいる。なくすんじゃねえぞ。General instructors are more or less the same anywhere you go. The general message is you're trash. They verbally abuse you and call you everything you do a fuck up. Helps keep the recruits humble and discourages them from trying anything stupid. 
The instructor glared fiercely at us and called us our names and handed out our tags, zeroing in on the problem kids who need a little help breaking free from their worldly desires. Once we lined up in the order our names were called, he divided us into 12 groups of 14 people each and explained that this made a single company. Small groups or squads. I ended up in the 7th. Well, guys, this is going to be our new life on this military base. So how's it? What's, what's going to happen? What's going to go down? Well, we're going to gradually find out as we continue on with the story in the next episodes of The Labyrinth of Grisai. Now, remember, if you like the video, to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more. Update every day, except for weekends. So, yeah. Take it easy, guys.